Yep. Praise the Lord. If you are awake, I say good morning, everyone. And the Lord impacts your life in a very special way today in Jesus' name. And for all our brothers, sisters, ministers, professionals, workers, everywhere in our country, in our continent, Africa, and all over the world, I welcome everyone this morning in Jesus' name. And I pray. As the series will go on in what we're doing, the Lord will give you the key. Amen. Master key. Amen. You'll open the door. Amen. You'll move up. Amen. You'll move on. Amen. You'll move forward. Amen. And your life will be enriched by heaven in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's pray together. Father, we we'll thank you for this day. Thank you for this time. Lord, we pray that today you impart the lives of all your children, all your servants, all your ministers, all your workers, everyone in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray nothing will be, will be dark in every, anyone's life. Shine the light. Give us the key. Help us to move on in the strength, in the power of the Lord, even today in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. What I mean is a global amen. God has blessed you. You can sit down. As we begin, our ministers, professionals, Conference for ministers, for workers, for civil servants, for government officials, for professionals in every area. I want to come to a very familiar passage of scripture. And it is the Lord's Prayer that is common to you, to me, and to all churches. Because we know here is the prayer that Christ himself taught us and he told us how to pray. In Matthew chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 9. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And then in verse 10, it says, thy kingdom come. That will be done in earth as it is in heaven. 11, it says, give us this day our daily bread. In 12, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Verse 13, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power. And the glory forever. Amen. You miss your good amen there. God bless you. Amen in your life. Amen in your family. Today we're looking at the first message. The key to extraordinary living at the next level. The key. Christ was talking in to Peter and to the rest of the apostles and to the rest of us and he said I give you the key of the kingdom and whatsoever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatsoever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven look at those words those two words at the beginning of the message the key the key I know that many of us, as we're seeing that wonderful, beautiful chorus, will say, prayer is the key. How many of you know that chorus? God bless you. Prayer is the key. And I'm asking myself, prayer, prayer, prayer is the key. And yet the Bible says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, 
the Lord will not hear me. Prayer is the key. And the Lord said, I know you are praying to me, but I will not hear you. Why? Because your hands are full of blood. Which means then, when we say prayer is the key, we need to go further than that. It says, ye ask and receive not, because ye believed not. And ye ask and pray, because you ask amiss. So I cannot fully say prayer is the key. What kind of prayer is the key? The prayer of faith shall kill the sick. Faith is the key. What kind of prayer? Whatsoever you ask in my name, that I will give unto you. The name is the key. And then he says, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. Power is the key. And he says, my covenant will I not break. And I will not alter the thing, the word that has gone out of my mouth. The word is the key. Grace is the key. Let us come boldly to the throne of grace that we may ask for help and have each at the throne of grace. Grace is the key. And then he says, he gave the gift unto some. The manifestation of the Spirit. It says the word of wisdom. And by the same Spirit, the word of knowledge. And by the same Spirit, the gift of faith. And the gifts of healing. And the gifts of uh, prophecy. And the gift of diverse kinds of tongues. And the gift of interpretation. The gift is the key. And then it says... Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. The truth is the key. Love is the key. Because he says, because he has set his love upon me. Therefore, I will answer him. I will lift him up. And with long life will I satisfy him. And I will show him my salvation. Love is the key. The prayer will pray in faith by the truth in the name of Jesus and the power of the Holy Ghost with the grace of God, with the gift of God. The prayer will pray in love to God and love to humanity. That is the key. This morning, the key to extraordinary living. We want to come to the next level. The next level, the level that will become unstoppable. In your life, you'll become unstoppable. The prayer that will pray and the life that will live that will become unconquerable. That you're moving on and moving on and marching on and nothing will ever stop your life and your ministry in Jesus' name. The key to extraordinary living at the next level. I don't want to remain at the level I was last decade, last year, even last month. I want to move on. I want to move on to the next decade and to the next year. And I want to have a vision, an ideal, a goal, the mountaintop, the peak, the next level. I don't want to be roaming around the wilderness 40 years, for decades, just merry-go-round. I want to move on to the land of promise. Am I talking about somebody there? You'll move on in Jesus' name. There are three points I'm looking at today. Number one, 
proper relationship and fellowship with the heavenly father. If I'm going to have the key, I need to have a proper relationship with the God of heaven with our Redeemer, with my Father, with the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, proper relationship and fellowship with the Heavenly Father. Number two, perfect righteousness and faithfulness of the Holy Father. I can trust Him. I can believe Him. I can, trust, I can depend on Him because His righteousness is perfect. His faithfulness is perfect. And we have the perfect righteousness and faithfulness of the Holy Father. Number three is the pure respect without face mask before the Heavenly Father. We come to God and we don't wear a face mask and say, God, you know, I've been the most gentle, the most righteous. And the most glorious man here on earth. And God says, what's your name? And you mention your name. He said, no, that's not your name. You are a hypocrite. Remove the face mask. And let us talk face to face. We come before the Lord. And we remove every face mask. And we have pure respect for the God of heaven. And you will find God will answer your prayer like never before. Yeah. From today, from this hour, the Lord will open the heavens before you. Yeah. And you have more than you are asking for in Jesus' name. Now, number one, a proper relationship and fellowship with the Heavenly Father. Already you see there, after this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father, our Father, our Father. There is a relationship. Our Father. There is a reliance on Him. Our Father. There is a refocusing on the Lord, on the God of heaven, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Three things we're looking at here. Number one, proper relationship with the heavenly father. I come to God. I come to my father and I have relationship with him and he says, ask and you receive because you are a son, a daughter in the family. Seek and you will find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Then if ye be able, know how to give good things unto your children. How much more will your heavenly Father give good things to them that ask him? Look at number two there. Perceived reliance on the heavenly Father. Number three, purposeful reconnection, refocusing on the heavenly father look at number one this is proper relationship proper relationship with the heavenly father look at that after this manner therefore pray ye a father which art in heaven hallowed be thy name now how does he become our father my father your father. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 6, reading from verse 17. First Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. Wherefore come out from among them. When we were born naturally, we came in the midst of all other people, born in sin, reared in sin. Mixing with sinners like us, were like people looking down and picking all the things, like all those dirty chickens and hens, picking the things on the floor, on the ground of the world. And then he says, to be your father, and for you to say, my father who art in heaven, come out from among them, easily saying, repent. Turn around, change your mind, get away from darkness and come into the light. 
Wherefore come out from among them, and be ye separate, says the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. What does that mean? Touch not that unclean cigarette, that unclean idol, that unclean alcohol, the thing that makes you unclean, and I will receive you. Look at verse 18. And I will be a father unto you. See the condition? Come out. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Have a new life. And then I'll be a father unto you. And ye shall be my sons and my daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Somebody there praise the Lord. I said somebody there praise the Lord. Galatians chapter 4, I'm looking at verses. Galatians chapter 4, looking at verses there. And because ye are sons, God has sent forth a spirit, the spirit of his son, into your heart, crying, Abba, Father. Because you have come out, you have repented, and you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and he is the bridge between the sinner and the holy, holy, holy God. Because you have repented and you believe on the Lord Jesus, he now has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts that makes you call Abba Father. Look at verse 7. In verse 7, Wherefore thou art no more a servant, a slave, a servant of sin, a slave of sin, a servant of Satan, a slave of Satan, because you have repented and you believe on the Lord, thou art no more a servant of substance. A servant that you need to take those hard drugs and spoil, destroy your life. Thou art no more a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Before I leave that point, relationship. What kind of relationship? Come back to the Lord's Prayer. Matthew chapter 6, verse 9. A father-child relationship. A father which art in heaven. Number two, a deity worshiper relationship. Hallowed be thy name. Number three, a sovereign subject relationship. Thy kingdom come. Number four, it's a master-servant relationship. And then number five, a benefactor-beneficiary relationship. You're always asking him, and he's always supplying your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And then as you come to verse 12, the shepherd sheep relationship. Because it says, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And then we have a guide, pilgrim relationship. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. You get the point? When we come to the Lord, and we pray and we say, Our Father, which art in heaven, there's a relationship with his children, and he is a father, and we have that father child relationship. And you know, you cannot belong to two fathers at the same time. If Satan is your father, by the works you do, then God cannot be your father. And you come to God completely, your whole life is centered on the relationship you have with the heavenly father. Father, deity, and you are a worshiper. Sovereign, and you are a subject. Master, and you are a servant. Benefactor, and you are the beneficiary. Shepherd, and you are the sheep guide. And 
you are the pregame. game come to number two here number two perceived reliance on the heavenly father we, we, we trust him we believe in him we lean on him we rely on him after this manner therefore pray ye a father which art in heaven a father when you go through the prayer it talks about the attitude we have in prayer number one our that's an unselfish attitude it's not just give me give me give me give me it's not just me and my family full stop our father that word our our goes beyond your local church our goes beyond your denomination our goes beyond your little circle our goes beyond your tribe our it goes beyond the people your fellowship together locally every sunday hour you have an unselfish attitude father our father that's a filial attitude you're not coming to the father as a judge yes yes a judge might be a judge to the community but if it's your father when you come in you're not coming into the judge you are coming to your father and the father is the judge of all flesh but when we come to him we're coming to him as a member of the family and we have a filial relationship a filial attitude hallowed be thy name is a reverent attitude we reverence him we respect him we don't just come in and say god go and do this for me give me this give me that uh-uh we need to show respect we need to honor him hallowed be thy name you see the people that uh, you know they come to prayer they point to heaven they say god what are you looking at i'm suffering here this is happening that's happening and you've not done this uh, hold on hold on hallowed be thy name that kind of attitude you have in pointing at god almost wanting to you know touch his face with your little puny finger that one is not boldness that one is not courage and that's not one is not proper prayer there is a reverent attitude and then it says that will be done is a submissive attitude and it says thy kingdom come a loyal attitude i'm a part of the kingdom i'm a kid in the kingdom i'm a subject in the kingdom and therefore i say thy kingdom come i have a loyal attitude i have a submissive attitude give us this day our daily bread i have a dependent attitude christ said without me you can do nothing and i realize that maybe i'm a farmer <clears throat> and the farm i cultivate i need strength from god the farm i cultivate i need rain from heaven the farm i cultivate i need god to protect the seed and the cross and drive the pests away so i cannot say like a name like um, uh, this uh, man nebuchadnezzar and then he came and he said see the kingdom i have built by my power in my strength by myself and that man became an animal we must have a dependent attitude forgive us this day our debts like we forgive the people that are indebted to us we have a penitent attitude lead us we have a humble attitude i don't know the way i don't know tomorrow i don't know next week i don't know next year lead me to the rock that is higher than i and then thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory and that is a confident 
attitude. When I come to God, I have a confident attitude because I know there is no power beyond the power of God. And then forever and ever and ever is a permanent attitude. I'm not just coming in and going out. I'm not up and down. I'm not believing and unbelieving. I'm not relying on him and then relying on idols forever. That's a permanent attitude. As we come to God there now, and we pray the way Christ has taught us to pray, we have an unselfish attitude, a filial attitude, a reverent attitude, a loyal attitude, a submissive attitude, a dependent attitude, a penitent attitude, a humble attitude, a confident attitude, and a permanent <coughs> attitude. Let's come to number three. Number three here, purposeful, refocusing on the Heavenly Father. Sometimes we forget that God is all in all. We come to prayer and some people will not even praise God and thank God for who he is for what he has done and for what he is doing for his promises and for his project and for his plans and the things he want to get done in the world we're looking at our, you know at our community at our country we're saying god why this why this we're saying there is this and there is that when are we going to come out of this and then we look at our families we'll say god look at us here we are this one does not have job that one does not uh, have a food that one does not have this and we just talk about ourselves all the time and jesus said don't pray that way you see, a father which art in heaven, that's about God. Then you say, hallowed be thy name. Don't talk about yourself yet. That's about God. Thy kingdom come. Don't talk about your kingdom, about your state, about your situation yet. We're talking about God. And then thy will be done. Don't talk of, I want, I want, I want. Start with God. And say, thy will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. And then you tell him, have I missed my way? Have I said something wrong? Have I gone in the wrong direction? And you are not happy with me? Forgive us our debt. And then you say, you don't say, I have certificate. I have power. I have strength. I don't need you. As for daily bread, I can do that myself. As for, you know, success in life, you've given me bread. Leave me alone. I can do everything. You say, Give us this day a daily bread. And then you tell the Lord that he will not lead you into temptation. He will deliver you from evil. Look at this now. When we're talking about refocusing on the heavenly father. Number one, God's paternity. That's our father. What in heaven? Paternity. Number two, God's priority in god's priority hallowed be thy name he wants respect he wants honor he wants you to hallow him because if the god of angels and men is the god of heaven and earth that's god's priority number three god's program that's in verse 10 it tells us it says the kingdom come he has a kingdom and is going systematically. There are kingdoms of the world and then one day the Lord is moving on to when the kingdoms of this world shall be the kingdom of his dear son. And that God's program, that's what we focus on. God's pleasure, that was his pleasure, that will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. 
Focus on that, God's provision, that's our daily bread, and God's pardon, that's his forgiveness, God's protection, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, and God's preeminence, that he is, his is the power, the kingdom, and the glory forever and ever, and everybody said, and so, as we come to pray, if we're going to pray aright, we're thinking of God, we're focusing on God, we're relying on God, we're appreciating who God is, His paternity, His priority, His program, His pleasure, His provision, His pardon, His protection. And I pray as we show God the honor, the reverence, the respect, I pray he will see you that you are really on praying ground. And all your prayers he will answer in Jesus' name. Let's come to point number two now. Point number two, perfect righteousness and faithfulness. Of the heavenly father. Look at Matthew chapter 6. Verse 9. After this manner therefore. Pray ye. Our father. Which art in heaven. Our father. The storms on earth. Do not affect him. The situation on earth. Does not affect him. The enemies on earth. Do not affect him. Satan on earth going up and down, to and fro. Satan does not affect him. A father which art in heaven, not affected by the storms, by the problems, by all the various things on earth, his resources are still available. They have not been affected by the economy of the earth. A father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, every knee shall bow. Bow to Christ, bow to God, and even those who are rebellious against him today, in eternity, they will bow unto him. Hallowed be thy name. Three things I'm looking at. Number one, the fatherhood of the heavenly father. Number two, the faithfulness of the honorable father. Number three, tenacious faith in the holy father. Look at John chapter 17. I'm reading from verse 11. John 17 verse 11. And now I am no more in the world but these are in the world i come to thee holy father holy father christ the son called him heavenly father called him holy father and the bible calls him the most high heavenly holy and high now we're talking about the fatherhood of the heavenly father we're looking at psalm 103 verse 11 psalm 103 verse 11 for as the heaven is high above the earth so great is his mercy toward them that fear him look at verse 12 it says as far as the east is verse 12 as far as the east is from the way so far as he removed our transgressions from us that's fatherhood he loves us like a father much more than a father loves the children. And when any of the children will come and say, Father, I am sorry. Say, that's enough. That's all right. 
I forgive you because he is a father. That's the fatherhood of God. He tells us in Bustachina, in Bustachina, he tells us, it says like as a father pitieth his children, you fall into a pitch. The father will not say that will teach you a lesson. He picks you up. He brings you out. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. In Isaiah chapter 63, reading from verse 16, Isaiah 63, reading from verse 16, it says, Doubtless, without any shadow of doubt, thou art our father. Doubtless. No shadow of doubt, thou art our father. Though Abraham be ignorant of us, though Israel acknowledge us not, thou, O Lord, art our father, our redeemer, and thy name is from everlasting. Who is this? Who are the people talking there? Those are the Gentiles that say we're not the natural seed of Abraham. Though Abraham be ignorant of us, we're Gentiles. Maybe we're Africans, Americans, British, Europeans. We're not Jews. Maybe we're Asians, and though Abraham will not, will it not know us because we are not circumcised like the seeds of Abraham, and though Israel acknowledge us not, thou, because of thy universal fatherhood, thou art a father, a redeemer. Thy name is from everlasting. I didn't hear an amen there. John chapter 20, verse 17. John 20, verse 17. Jesus says unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my Father. There's no doubt in your heart. That the father claimed Jesus as his son. Thou art my only begotten son. In you I am well pleased. And Jesus always lifted up his eyes to heaven. And he says, Father, I know that thou hast heard me. And now he says, I have not yet ascended to my father, but go and tell my brethren and say unto them, Look at this, I ascend unto my father and your father. I ascend unto my father and your father. He's talking about his brethren. Those who by faith have come to the Lord, they have repented. They believe and they have been washed in the blood of the Lamb. And he says, God is as well my father and your father. Think about that. And God has that manifestation of love towards you. Because as he loved the Son, the only begotten Son, in such a way he has loved you. He says, I ascend to my father and your father my god and your god the father of the lord jesus is my father say that for yourself be it confirmed in your life in jesus name number two the faithfulness of the honorable father faithfulness first corinthians chapter one verse nine Faithfulness. God is faithful. Every promise he made, you'll find God is faithful. Whosoever comes to me, I will in no wise cast off. God is 
faithful. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord will be saved. God is faithful. And I will bring them cure. I will bring them hell. God is faithful. He is full of grace and glory. And no good thing will he withhold from you. Come. God is faithful. He will provide for you. He will take care of your life. God is faithful by whom you were called unto the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. He is faithful. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. And from this day on, there will be no disappointment in your life in Jesus' name. Psalm 104, verse 1. Psalm 104. We're looking at verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, thou art very great. Thou art clothed with honor and majesty. Because of his honor, he will not deceive. You'll find him faithful at every stage of your life. As you are young, come to him. You'll find him faithful. As you are getting older, you'll find him faithful. When you come to your last days on earth, you'll find him faithful. His honor, his nature, compel him to be faithful to everything he has said. He's clothed with honor and majesty. We're looking at 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 3. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, we're looking at verse 3. But the Lord is faithful, who shall establish you and keep you from evil. Yeah. He will keep you from evil. Yeah. Why? Because he is faithful. Come to number three here. Number three here, we're looking at tenacious faith in the Holy Father. Tenacious faith. A faith that will not give up. Why? Because we know he is holy. And whatever he has said, and whatever he has promised, he will do. Because of that, we're tenacious in trusting him. John 17, 11. And now, I'm no more in the world, but these are in the world. I come to thee, Holy Father. Keep through thine own name those whom thou has given me that they may be one as we are is holy it will not disappoint you look at mark chapter 11 verse 22 he is trustworthy he is dispendable and because of that we cannot faith in him mark 11 22 jesus and through says have faith in God. At the crossroads, have faith in God. When the storm is raging, have faith in God. When there is confusion at the crossroad, have faith in God. When there is a need that man cannot meet in your life, have faith in God. Verse 23, in verse 23, for verily, truly, certainly, assuredly, I say unto you, that whosoever shall say to this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have, he shall have, I will have, you'll have what you demand in Jesus' name. And then he says, 
He says, He will answer your prayer. What are you there? He will answer your prayer in Jesus' name. Let's rise up and pray. Let's rise up and pray and talk to the Lord in prayer. All we have heard, everything that He has said, let us believe God and God will answer our prayer in Jesus' name.